R goes hooked in forever to be compatible with uh, super intelligence. Wouldn't that intelligence move to evolve and then chuck away those and start all over again? Um, I mean, Uh, my, my question was for Anna, just um, it, as much as it, it doesn't really affect the outcome for humanity, the future of that, uh, the idea of a future in which there's an AI with long term goals that can never change, doesn't seem to take into account complexity theory, chaos maths, the idea that um, an AI couldn't predict the, or every possible outcome of every, uh, every action, the combinant, combinatorial explosion is insane. So, um, it's hard to, it's hard to, it, it, do you, I'd be curious to know, do you count unforeseen consequences as accidents? I, I personally would. And the uh, last question, I'd run the back uh, Just to question all three of you about um, the idea that future AI is going to wipe this out. Um, one of the ideas is that you're going to build an AI and that's going to build a smart AI and a smart AI that eventually wipes us all out. But one of those early AIs is supposed to be smarter than us, right? So what if you build one AI and it says, I'm not going to build a better AI than me because it will wipe me out along with all of you squishy humans. <laughs> okay, the panel will have a batch of those. Anyone got one phone or? Yeah, different. So, addressing the first and third questions at once. Um, there are good arguments that having a particular goal is a stable attractor in the sense that systems that approximately have a particular goal will tend to, to come toward having that goal stably. Um, some good ones were written out by Steve Omohundro. They're on the blue handout, which is sitting next to the registration desk. The basic idea is what Eliezer calls the Gandhi folk theory, which is if Gandhi doesn't want to kill people, and you offer Gandhi a pill that if he swallows it will make him go ahead and kill people, and want to kill people, Gandhi won't take the pill that would change his preferences because he doesn't want to kill people. Um, and in general, if you have something that has X as its goal, it will, and it's trying to figure out which of these possible ways to edit itself might what, make it not have, make, sorry, might make it best achieve X, because that's what it means to have X as its goal, it won't want to change that goal. Um, and so, it doesn't mind making, so that was the answer to the first question, to the third. It doesn't mind making an AI that's more powerful if it has X as its goal, that is, if, it had, if the, the AI itself has X as its goal. Um, but yes, it would resist unforeseen future changes, but no, that doesn't mean that it would, that it would resist them at a level where there was no AIs powerful enough to kill us. Um, so anyone else? Well, I'm somewhat skeptical about uh, how good a superintendent would be at uh, dealing with unforeseen situations. It, of course, depends on how much uh, complex it is in the world. So if there's just one big superintendent, it might even organize the world in a simple manner, so it's easy to predict. However, if you have a more slow intelligence explosion, which I find more likely than Anna, in that case we're going to be more smart systems around in almost the same magnitude as the smartest one, and they are, of course, going to introduce a lot of complexity. There is a lot of interest in game theory, and I think this field is still in a state of flux. So uh, I think there is room for accidents in the future. It might just be that these accidents are going to look very weird to us. Uh, but if so, they're engineered accidents. They're accidents that are meant by at least some powerful entity. They aren't sort of natural accidents. But they might also be uh, engineered in the sense, uh, in the same same in the sense that the financial crisis was engineered. A lot, and everybody who goes to, to a business school learns about the Dutch tulip uh, the, the, the bubble uh, in the first week. And still we have stock market crashes. Everybody were acting according to rational self-interest uh, and anyway you produce something like a uh, financial crisis. So you might very well imagine the same counterpart among superintendences. It might be incomprehensible to us, but it might be the same kind of weird dynamics. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. Certainly, I certainly agree. Now let's uh, let's uh, the chat with that. Tom. Yeah. Tom said, uh, why would a super intelligent uh, uh, AI generate something that would wipe it out? So uh, uh, first of all, you you're right, and that's called the motivation of the feeder. Of course, that process is not inevitable. It's a danger at which we want to be aware of. And that's Anna's work with uh, one of the... But there is a, another thing to, uh, to consider in this uh, question. Think of you being that AI and you want to build a paperclip factory or whatever is, is it, it is that you want. Now, one way you can go about it is build an AI which is smarter than you don't solve the problem or at least you will be tempted to do it, if you see what I mean. So, the AI might... Uh, am I wrong? <laughs> so, the AI might do the same thing that you did when you built it. You built something so, so that it would solve problems for you and then that might work. But so the AI yeah. might not mind it being destroyed. Why, why does the AI have the same anthropomorphic desire to continue its existence as we do? And so, I think it's very difficult to reason about these things. We must be aware of projecting our current uh, thinking about humans into these AIs. The AIs can do terrible things without us uh, realizing it and just imputing our own current motivations in there it isn't the safe way to go about things. Uh, okay. if, if, if you, David, that's an excellent point. For a long while I was thinking this is all ludicrous because self-preservation is a value that biological creatures have. Something that, that we grew up right in our lamb, why would it have self-preservation? I think Nick Boston had a nice idea about it. Uh, Nick Boston uh, uh, said, uh, it doesn't need to have self-preservation as a goal, it could be an instrumental value. Whatever is the AI's goal, let's say winning chess or make paper clips, then uh, self-preservation becomes an instrumental value, which means I want to survive, whatever I am, want to survive so that I will create paper clips. That's the only reason why I want to survive. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, should we take a couple other questions? Um, Thanks. Uh, this is a question for Andrew. Uh, when it comes to new ideas, I think we, uh, what we think about, in my view, the biggest source is think, think of the app or the, the app score. So you never can predict what people come up with. Uh, and I think that possibly will be the biggest source of ideas because I work a lot with sensor networks quite a bit. And, and today, if you talk about sensor networks with SAP and stuff like that, that's a very supply chain top down initiative. But uh, if you look at things like Arduino, which is open source hardware, open source software, people are using that to do unpredictable things and it's really taking off. I think uh, it comes from universal data. It had no ecosystem, it created no ecosystem. I think that is to me the biggest source of new ideas. And uh, two questions over here. So it's for Martin, um, as a um, neuroscientist, computational neuroscientist, when do you think we will be able to decode the human brain and upload it? I know you said it's diff difficult to estimate the timing, but what is your personal estimate? Uh, one question, um, when we see the graphs that you have, uh, we tend to believe that the future performance that we have seen is guaranteed based on the past performance. How sure are we today that this performance, according to what you know and what is being done currently in the labs, is um, going to continue on the same trend? Um, if you can just tell us about this. Okay, I'm going to try a very brief answer to them. Uh, I didn't have the time to get into the crowdsourcing idea, but I think that actually it might be an entirely new field of AI that's currently not being studied enough. Because obviously we've got a lot of human intelligence on the net and we can channel that into training AI into very interesting ways. So I think uh, there is a lot of uh, potential there to actually have the App Store approach and actually have people do local training or even local updates for artificial intelligence systems. When it comes to forecasting brain emulation, I have a white paper where I do some more elaborate uh, analysis of it, but basically the reason I'm somewhat confident about it is that unlike the kind of pure artificial intelligence built uh, straight from logic or something, 
this would actually be based on a more of a known technologies like scanning technology, computational neuroscience technology, large scale computing technology. There are still a few big unknown unknowns like would actually a functional simulation of mind that my mind actually have a mind? Are the scale separations in the brain that actually enable us to run the simulations? Or is there no scale separation at all and it would be like simulate a turbulent system? Uh, I don't have the time to get into more detail, but I have a kind of probability estimate which one should not take too seriously. Because the final question is the interesting one. Uh, of course we can't extrapolate past performance arbitrarily far in most cases. We can't trust more slow to continue indefinitely. Sooner or later it's going to slow down. However, uh, it's been holding fairly far. We can do a probability estimate of various kinds. And knowledge increments generally don't tend to be lost that much. So I think the software improvements, when it comes up to smarter algorithms, that's all the ones we can really trust are going forward. It's just that they're so irregular, we can't trust exactly to get the improvement we want by the year 2050 or so. The hardware, that is a lot of small increments, it's moving on along a fairly smooth curve. So that's more reliable in the short run. 